was Mortala Muhammad not the leader of that coup? Mortala Muhammad was the architect and a very hot head that we know history says and describes him was the major actor, planner. But he stayed back in Ikeja. The mandate was to the mutineers to strike when they get to Badon. Not do it in Kaduna for the political consequences. Not in Enugu nor Bini, but they chose Ibadan. Ibadan had been marked for the operation. But Murtala Mohammed was the actor behind the scene. Who was Theophilus Danjuma to the head of state? Thank you very much. Captain Theophilus ya Yakubu Danjuma was the chief security officer to the head of state, Major General Ironsi. He was, as we know, CSO, there to protect the life of the person and his or her family. So Danjuma was the chief security officer to Ironsi. The chief security officer yes. killed the man he was meant to protect. Uh, in his, uh, he made some statements shortly after, but about 20 years ago or so. He said the intention was just to kidnap Ironsi, put him on trial, and explain the reason why his government had not prosecuted the Major Kadunanze Ugu team that led the first military coup. That the intention was just to arrest Ironsi, take him to a trial, and ask questions. But he said suddenly, when they were descending the stair of uh, Gomez Asagudi, one of the RSMs, sub sublatan that he used to arrest Ironsi, became uncontrollable. And that it was that young Midu officer who ordered the firing of Ironsi and Fajui. My guest is Chief Lekon Alabi, Mayor Lubadon Fibadoland, and the founding secretary general of the Adekunle Fajui Foundation. It's about the power of history. It's about the power of analysis. Are you in this class of politics and power? Because what transpired was the power game. The January 1966 coup that some have called the Igbo coup was carried out primarily by Igbo officers within the Nigerian military. Their stated goal was to eliminate corruption and ethnic favoritism, which they believed was crippling the nation's development. The coup resulted in the deaths of prominent political leaders, including the Prime Minister, Sabubakata Fawa Balewa, Premier of the Northern Region, Amadou Bello, and Premier of the Western Region, Samuel Ladoke Akintola. Major General Aguye Ronse, an Igbo officer, emerged as the head of the military government after the January 1966 school. Let me make the point here. The officers that carried out the coup did not emerge as the leader of the country. Agui Ronsi at that time was the head of the army. I am not sure he was part of the coup. Was he part of the January coup? No, he wasn't. He wasn't. Despite being the supreme commander, uh, the GOC, as yes, he was the GOC of the Nigerian army. But later became the supreme commander on being appointed the military head of state. But it wasn't part of it. The master planner was Ife Ajuna, a graduate from the University of Ibadan, who held the high jump record in Nigeria and West Africa. He consulted with his 
fellow Major Chukuma Kaduna Nzegu. Hot headed. A revolutionary. He was. Nzegu was a true revolutionary because in his broadcast on 15 January 1966, which can be Googled, he said, among others, the plan of this government, as you have rightly said, is to eliminate corruption, accusing Nigerian politicians of not only being 10 percenters, they've graduated to 100 percenters. Another focus, he said, was they were going to release Chief Obafe Miawolowo from the Calabar prison, where he was having a 10 year jail, put him as the head of state. And gave and gave him military muscle for six months. Upon the stabilization of the future Awolo federal government, he, Chukuma Kadunanzegu, will resign his commission from the Nigeria Army and go to the then South Africa to fight apartheid. Remember, it's a class of politics and power. Yes. And as you listen. I will always recommend books to you to read. I have a book here. You can, if you are watching online, are you watching me on Facebook now? You can see this book. It's entitled Nzogu. I recommend this book to you. Obasanjo wrote this one. Nzogu. Go get it. If you don't know how to get it, you can contact me. I also tell you how to get books. So you can co contact me on 80 1849 That is not the studio's number, so don't call that number. Contact me on WhatsApp if you want to know how to get books. So I recommend this book to you in Zogu, written by Ulu Shegun. Or Basunjo, it will help you in your knowledge of history. Read. When you read, you think critically. I have another book here entitled Ironsi Nigeria, the Army, Power, and Politics. Can you see this book? Hey, come and watch the radio man. Can you see Chief Lekon Alabi? You should be watching us. And remember, you can download State Affairs app. You can download State Affairs app anywhere in the world. And you are watching and you are listening. So go on Google Play Store. Download the new State Affairs app. If you had the old app, just update it. Remember my or your app? If you've not downloaded my or your app, you will be missing. Download the app on Google Play Store and join the class. So come online and join the class. I'm streaming on Edmondo Bilo's pages on Facebook. I'm streaming on State Affairs page on Facebook. We are streaming on Splash FM page on Facebook. Leave your comment. You can tweet at me, ask questions. Chief Leko Alabi is here. So go on Twitter. You can tweet at me. Tweet at Splash FM 1055 at EOBILO. You can leave a message for me on Instagram. Search for Edmondo Bilo on Instagram. Follow me. Let's engage. There is also State Affairs on Instagram. Search for State Affairs at State Affairs NG on Instagram. And I'm coming out with a newsletter soon. Some of my scripts on this program I can send to you, but you have to subscribe to the newsletter. I give you details of history. That would be the takeaway notes from the class. Right? So I'll be giving you notes that you can take away, but you subscribe to the newsletter. That will be out soon. And from here, I can pay. I'm going to pick the first 10 persons to join me in the resource center in the class of politics and power. In that case, we are coming closer to learn, 
learning about leadership. So I've recommended two books to you this morning already. Mzogu by Olushegu Obasanjo and Ironsi, Nigeria, the Army, Power and Politics, written by Chooks, Ilue Bunam, written, written by Chooks, Ilue Bunam. Read these books. If you don't know how to get them, you can contact me on 080-999-18449. And that WhatsApp number, you can also tell me about situations around you. You can give me information about what is going on around you. If you're not good with WhatsApp, you can email me, eobilo at stateaffairs, eobilo at stateaffairs, and you can get me. Right? So email, that's my email address, eobilo at stateaffairs.com. Radio man. Sir. Can I tolerate my interjection? There is another title which I want to recommend on your program. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. It is called Why We Struck <laughs> by Major Adewale Ademoyega. Yes, it's one of the books I was going to recommend in this class, too. Thank you. Thank you, you. You need to read that. You need to read that. Why We Struck. Yes. Yes. It's one of the books. I came with 10 books to recommend to you. You know, I said the theme of this class is critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And critical thinking you will get from reading. Mm. It's the story of Aguye Ironsi, Adekunle Fajui. You know, the statue of Adekunle Fajui is somewhere in Dubai. Opposite Union Bank. Is it Union Bank? Around that first bank in Dubai there. How many of you know? It's called the Ido Cenitaf. Mm. Dubai. You know, until two years ago, I noticed that that was a Dekunle Fajui. I just was, ah, who is this military officer? I walked in, I said, Dekunle Fajui, my guy. The colonialist built that spot and put the unknown soldier dressed in the sublatan uniform of the typical African soldier. As you also have at Idumata in Lagos. So one day, one of the military administrators removed the British statue of the African soldier and took it to the government house, Agodi, facing the government house. And when the civilian came, they thought it was a bad symbol for democracy. A soldier facing the government house, Agodi Bado. So they removed it, transferred it back to Ido Senotaf. Then another military officer came and said, No, instead of your known soldier, put the effigy of Lieutenant Colonel Francis Adekule Fajui, the man who exhibited this world standard ethics of the army. Loyalty. And Thank you. Loyalty. Bravery. Loyalty and honor. He died for his boss. Oh, God. He had every opportunity to escape or negotiate with the young mutineers. But no, no, no. He said, no. You should have taken him in Kaduna or Enugu or Benin. Not here. What do you want me to say to Nigerians and the world? And you people, do you realize that myself and the Supreme Commander, we have been friends from the Congo because they were friends. Yeah. Even though Iransi was his senior. And you know, they were, both of them were chubby, but Iransi was taller, but they look alike, sort of. And they were friends. So he said, rather than betray my friend, my Supreme Commander, no, I would die with him, along with him. And they died together. The Land Rover that was driven out of the government house, Agodi, was almost moving when Fajui jumped inside it because they were giving him the option. They said, sir, we have not come for you. Rather, we have come for this man. And that one man was the thing that infuriated Fajui most. A major general, 
GOC of the Nigerian Army, now Supreme Commander of Nigerian Forces, military head of state, you are referring to him as that man. Perhaps he didn't understand the reality of a coup at that time. And that will be. Yes, that. Uh, <laughs> until a coup is successful. Uh, what's it? Where the stake old, stake old, uh, where they execute them? If a coup fails, the, the planners know they are going to end because my execute one. It is when it is successful that now you start saluting. Like DJ now. It's, it's successful. Coups, some coups fail, even at planning stage. But Bangida is on record of being the meanest executioner of so called coup planners twice during the alleged Vasa coup of December 1985 and during the April 20, 1999 purge of Major Godwin Oka. Gideon Oka. If Gideon Oka oh, and Co had, had caught him. 42 young officers were executed despite the pleas from the world. Babangida executed them, wanting to make it known plainly to everybody in the armed forces that if you fail, you, tell, you get the death certificate. Babangida that took away his best man, Mamad Vasa, he killed him. This, <laughs> the son of Mamad Vasa. T. Tomorrow insists that his father was honest or not guilty of the allegation against him. Even the, mo the wife, they are all still standing on the denial that Mama Vasa didn't plan any coup against Babangida. More so, not only Babangida's best man, the man who got the entrance form to NDA for Babangida. So you have to be free, beware of friends. There are many lessons to learn. Beware of that man, so this is your so-called closest friend. Because when Izeogu was rounded up in Kaduna and put in detention, he still insisted that there will be war between the north and the south, and that he was going to lead the war of the north. When he heard that Ironsi had been invited by the Senate in Lagos. The Senate president was Senator Nwafo Orizu, who invited the head of the army to take over. And Nsoku said, no. Was that invitation voluntary? And it was constitutional because they met. The Federal Executive Council quickly met. Did they have any option? They didn't. They the, didn't. the military boys were already they on rampage. They didn't. And, and when they were hearing and the things were getting clearer that Nzogu was a revolutionary so, a revolutionary and he didn't care a hoot and, and they, they read the speech at that address, eh? 100 percenters and he said they were going to deal with them they quickly assembled and said please, uh, head of the army come and take over you could see the way he took Amadou Bello out oh. that was you know, sometimes I don't want to read about it. Unzeogu was a favorite of Sir Amadou Bello. Because not, not only was Unzeogu born in Kaduna and given the middle name of Kaduna, Chukuma Kaduna Unzeogu, he was the typical Hausa man. Language, character, fashion, and all. There is a picture of Sir Amadou Bello hugging cadet. Nzogu. But why was Nzogu so hard on him? Uh -huh, because when they planned the coup, I had the opportunity of interviewing late Major Ademoyega, 1981, 42 years ago, on my program, Speak Out, at the NTA Ibadan. It's just like yours, current affairs program, 30 minutes. And that was the first time Major Ademoyega will come out in public. Because the radical University of Ife lecturers and students had invited him to deliver a lecture. So that's where I caught him. And it was and the recording was done in the residence of Dr. Yemi Ogubi, who was then a lecturer in Ife. Uh, I, I remember what I went through. Twice the recording was stopped by the radical lecturers. They said, uh, look, you are an agent of the Shagari government. 
they stopped the interview twice because I asked the question, sir. That's Major Adimoiga. Why was there no Nordana in your team that carried out the first coup? Ah. He answered. I think the radicals what? When I asked another question, they said, "No, stop this recording. Get out from here." Agent of Shagadi government. Why are you asking him? But level-headed Major Adimoiga, he said, "Please, please." Let him ask me any question, I will answer him. He's doing his job. Let him ask the question the public wanted, probably wanted him to ask. We will continue this discourse after this break. Remember, it is a class of history, a class of politics and power. The program is State Affairs on Splash 105.5 FM, The Integrity Station. We'll be back after this break. State Affairs with Edmondo Bilo. It's my journey to ensure the future is safe. As I inspect the ongoing construction of the 110 kilometer circular road in Ibadan, I am affected with optimism about the future. comes the engineer constructing our path to the future. It's about a new economy. It's about new thinking. As I sit in this construction vehicle, it reminds me of the journey ahead. This is a journey for all of us. And here, I come to tell the story. It's about the construction of Ibadan Circular Road. You can see in this vehicle is a sign that something good has come. Therefore, the ball is in the court of all your state people to ask themselves where do they want to be? As for me, I will be taking this circular road into the future. Where we are today, where we are today is this 32.2 kilometers southeastern part of the road, of the circular road. Now, the southeastern part of the circular road from Lagos and Lagos Ibadan Expressway and ends on the Ibadan Ilefe uh, Expressway. Now, what we are doing right there now, we have six bridges along that 32.2 kilometer and two interchanges. Now, we have the bridge one, which is here. The bridge one is the one at the Lagos Ibadan Express Road. Is a fourth span bridge and it has two loops. Now, the two loops now is when you are coming from by the end of the road, this is by the end of the road. This is from the Lagos end of the road. So, which means if you are coming from Lagos end of the road, we have a slip road that will join you to our uh, circular road. From what I can see, this project is about rebuilding the past. It is about turning failure into success. By this project, Shei Makinde tells me he is not taking a shortcut into the future. I am watching. It is still the coverage of the Rashid Ladoja Circular Road Ibadan, a 110 kilometer project, one of the biggest infrastructure projects in Nigeria at the moment, a project being carried out by the government of Shei Makinde. We are at the location of Bridge 2, 
of the project. As you can see, work is ongoing and the government is promising that it will deliver uh, the project. Uh, we'll move as fast as uh, uh, possible on the first section of the road, which is uh, 32 kilometers from uh, around the Tech U to uh, very close to uh, Ashejire, you know, on the uh, Ibadanif uh, Express Road. We can complete uh, within, uh, within the next uh, 12 months. It is one of the biggest road infrastructure projects in Nigeria. It is the construction of a highway of prosperity into the future. It is the evolution of new industrial and residential corridors for the sake of the future. It is about seeing the big picture. Now, firstly, there will be the accessibility. There will be improved connectivity between all these, um, um, let, let me call it the residents here, to the entire uh, Ibadan city in terms of the circular road. I've made, that's one. Two, development around this circular road, I've mentioned, we, we are going to have industrial estates on both sides of the roads. Automobile industry is coming there. Motor park as, um, industry uh, is coming, motor spare parts industry is coming there, trade fair is coming there. So you agree with me that there will be expansion of economy around this um, axis. That's one. Two, the GRA is also. Then we have this inland dry port, which will be, take Akinyele to be number one in Nigeria, number one uh, local government in Nigeria. This in terms of development, yeah, in terms of development. Oh. Thank you so much. We have hectares of land that the Excellency has reserved for what we call central business district that will be located in that area. Our own circular road also will give it a facelift, full development in terms of transportation. Mm -hmm. Then again, what will also be benefit? We have decongested the road network within our state, I mean within Ibadan, using this, uh, with this our circular road. Let me come again to say, you may, in the next two years, you might not even see trucks coming in into our um, um, city. Because if you are coming from Lagos, all right, you don't have to go, come down to um, the road, road and ring road and so on. All you need to do is just join this huh, circular road and move down to the east. Mm. Or go down to the north straight away. So you've... Just us, the busy area within the Badans, metropolitan city, we, you will not have any headache within the next two years once this place is completed. See this? The bridge. I can feel it. Let me see if I can shake it. Can I? I can feel it. Work is going on here. You can see for yourself. Workers are on site. Remember, this project that Twinko is running is to tell you about the future. The future the Shea Makinde government wants to take the people of your state into. A future of infrastructural development. On many occasions, I have asked the governor personally, will you deliver the circular road to the people of your state? Even before he became governor, I took him to task. I said, now that you are preparing to be governor, there is one thing I ask of you. Deliver it but on circular road to me. Deliver it to the people of your state. And he said, Monge, don't worry. Let me win and you see what I can do. Here I am. 
monitoring what Shei Makinde can do. We are in a world of accelerating change and development, and Makinde knows this. It's his responsibility to ensure excellence in this project. It's our responsibility to insist on excellence. We have consultants working on these sites. We have the contractors, we have the ministry staff. We have the independent expert advisory group, which we work with also on each of our sites. So I can... The program is State Affairs on Splash 105.5 FM, the Integrity Station. Let's see who is watching this program. Kola Walea Ramidi says, Why we struck by Ademo Yiga? And because I'm involved by Odumegu Ojuku, are good books on Nigerian political history. And the civil war, Kola Wale Aramide, you're right. Because I am involved by Ujuku, you get Ujuku's philosophical perspective in that book. Another book I'm recommending this morning is A Maker. A Maker is a book on Odumegu Ujuku. Ujuku was in the north when Kaduna and Zogu struck. Yeah, he was in Kano. Kaduna and Zogu was in Kaduna. Yes, it was. How is it that Ojuku did not know that a coup was going to take place? Well, one may get fillers, but no coup planner will be sorry to use the word daft as to expose their plan. So it's always kept close to the chest, known only to the inner members of the planners. So Juku wasn't aware, but it was already in the air. As of December 1965, anybody could pick that Nigeria was getting to the press P. Operation Wet here. Oh, God. Must have been the trigger. That was it. 19... Because when we discuss the civil war, yes. we tend to forget that the problem started from the western region. Because of the unnecessary intervention of the Tafabalewa led federal government into the affairs of Western region. Sending Awolowo to prison. Thank you. Then number two, action group party, like any political party in the world, had internal crisis, whereby the party leadership expelled the, nas the deputy national president of the party, Chief Samuel Ladoke Akitola, who happened to be the premier of Western region. So the contention was Akintola should abide because Nigeria was running the parliamentary system then. Should, excuse me, should abide with the constitution. That is, once your party says you are expelled, then you, you go to the polls in the assembly and you test your popularity. But if the odd is against you, you go. You go. But Akintola refused to go. He was backed by the federal power. Because he had run to Amadou Bello first and then Tafa Balewa, and they promised him, don't fear. If they expel you on paper, they won't be able to expel you on the ground. And those three musketeers were taken down by the so-called Igbo military officers. Yes, they were. But... Were they fighting for Awolo? Ah. From the record and his history background, Chukuma Kaduna Ide Nzogu was a revolutionary, like the Sankara mode. So he was sincere. That's why his speech generally was talking about corruption, corruption, and corruption. But if only the Iransi, the head of uh, uh, GOC of Yami, had not been given power by the Senate. And Nzogu had led the revolution. But why did uh, Nzogu stay back in Kaduna to kill his mentor? He was it, a revolutionary. Yeah, as it were. Because most of the officers backed out. Eh? Who was going to face Samadu Belu? Who? They said, eh? No, not me. 
So everybody backed out. Then he said, I will. He walked into his bedroom. He said, he will. And what did he do? He now gave <laughs> the group of soldiers that he took to uh, Sadana's residence. If after 10 minutes, I don't come out, bring this building down. To show you that he had passion for the assignment he took. And he had a hand grade. So, at uh, the nick of the 10 minutes, which he gave the boys on the ground, he jumped from the upstairs. That's why, if you see that picture, his right hand was in a sling. And the microphone was held for him by Major Asan Usman Kasina, the military governor. The boys in Lagos did not carry out the details of the coup. They should have taken out Aguyi Ironsi. He was the head of the army. He was. He was. But Aguyi Ironsi, when they got to his house, like the Abacha episode, Aguyi Ironsi was at a social party. Aguyi Ironsi was dancing the night away somewhere. But some people felt they were weak. Because Kaduna Zogu did his own job clinically. But clinically. Then the Eastern region, we should look at it. Yes. Dr. Michael Opara was the premier. But he was hosting the president of Greece. Yeah, he was hosting, what's his name now? The Greek president, who was on a state visit. And he had escorted him to the airport. Sir Makarios. That's what was saved the neck of Opara. But Nigeria didn't want to hear that. They said, you should have gone to the airport. Let's... Uh, Macarius fly, then do what you did to Premier Ahmad Belu, Premier Kitola, to Premier Opara. Azikiwe vanished from the country. Uh, Azikiwe got to know he had been given the hint and he said he was going on a world cruise. Who gave him a hint? Uh, everybody has agents everywhere. But Ahmad Belu knew there was going to be a coup. Oh, he was so confident. He was confident that it was going to happen to him. And this is the truth because Professor Shoinka was marked for execution. Mr. Tasholani was marked for execution for being a ton in Western region on the Premier and invariably the uh, NP, uh, what the NPC government. So I went to African Church Grammar School, Apata Ganga Ibadan, for one 1964 in border. Soldiers had been positioned inside government college campus to do what? To deal with Western radicals. So, so the copy struck on time. Uh -huh. Then Akitola went on a Friday, uh, on a Thursday. Yes, the uh, military the coup was on Saturday, January 15th. Akitola was in Kaduna on Thursday, January 13th. When he got there, they said Amadu Bello was here to return from Mecca. Amadu Bello was always observing his Jumat in Mecca and Medina. So Akitola had to wait. When he got back, he went to meet Amadou Bello at the Kaduna airport. Amadou Bello told him, SLA, go back to Ibadan. Put your mind at rest because they said they had targeted their own to take place on January 17, 1966. So Akhtala returned with the hope and the assurance given to him by Sir Amadou Bello. So one... one one group executed ahead of the other. There were two groups planning to topple one to topple Balewa government and the states, and the other one to deal with the so-called radicals who are troubling them. Eze Keulezi says, How lovely it would be if our politicians were also ordered to give account of their stewardship like Nije. <laughs> They need this kind of treatment urgently. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The worst democratic government is better than a military government, from my own opinion. Chief Aulo also said that. So if you are celebrating what's going on in Niger, I'm not with you. Yes, African politicians have messed up the system, but the military will not do better. Have we recovered from that January coup and the counter coup? If it had been executed the way it was planned to cover the whole country and not leave out a section, Eastern region, that's one. Two, um, Major Onzeogu 
in his speech, and I still believe him to tomorrow, was the plan they planned to take Awolo out of Calabar prison because Awolo was jailed on Trump up charges of treasonable felony. Install him, he said they will back him with the military might uh, for about six months. Once Awolowo government stabilized, Nzogu said he was going to resign his commission in the Nigerian army and go to South Africa. That's a, that's a radical. But again, you know, when you gain power, yes. it becomes a different ball game. Sivanus Olympio in Togo was revolutionary. Mm -hmm. When he gained power, Sivanus Olympio didn't want to leave anymore. Man, we don't know why the black man on getting power, and it's not only in politics, so social services, commerce, mention it. Once the black man gets power, he's going to change. Ah, uh, uh, what's his name? Master Sorry, Sanjay. I used the word Sibanis Olympia. Olymp I'm not, I mean in Yadema. Oh, the longest, uh, yes, okay, Yadema yeah. of Togo. Oh, yeah, he that, overthrew Sibanis uh, Olympia. That, uh, that's a Yadema, the friend of Gawan. So, um, Sergeant, Sergeant, Master Sergeant Samuel Do. Yeah. First night in Gome House, Liberia. Yeah. Because uh, Liberia was, and I think it's still fashioned after the USA. So on uh, his first dinner in Gome House, chandelier, bright lights, covered, uh, you know, co uh, where they put food, everything glowing, glittering. He didn't know, he wasn't aware that there was a, a steward right behind him on table. So, Sergeant So told, told his wife, hey, honey, we ain't going to leave this place in a hurry. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard he that. He told his wife, ah, honey, we are not going to leave this place in a hurry. When he saw chicken, baked beans, uh, salmon, uh, milk, ah, is this how they eat? See him in less than five years. He had changed physically. He became bloated. Bloated. And he died there. And he was doing Afro hair look, hair style. And when Yomi Johnson <laughs> caught him and brought, brought down the knife and he was cutting his... He was crying like a baby. He was saying, Yomi, 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 begging... That's what power does to Africans. And they get drunk. So if Kaduna Nzogu had, had succeeded, uh, uh, perhaps he would have been one of those crazy dictators uh, produced by Africa. Uh, please, I want, uh, he, he was my hero. Please uh, don't, don't, dis, don't disrobe him. Because no. from what we have seen from mm. history, even in Egypt, uh, they do so, they do so. None of them want to leave. Yeah, they they didn't so. change their country. Uh, they do so, so I have this fear that Kaduna Zogu would not have even changed Nigeria. Now let me defend him, even though he's dead. His mother was always on his neck. Kaduna, Kaduna, please marry now. Look at your mates, they are married. I want to carry your my grandchildren. And he will tell his mom, Mom, marriage is not the most... Just wait for me, I will marry. But please, don't ask me again about marriage. Ah, that's a great one, though. That's a great man. Which, uh, in all likelihood, might not become a despot like the rest of black leaders. Once they get to power... Hey, Kamuzu Banda of Malawi. Mm -hmm. He spent almost 30 years. <laughs> hey, Kamuzu Banda, they said he had a woman advisor, uh, Madam Betty or something. That's the nickname. Kamuzu Banda will make sure that every night he visited Madam Betty at her home. And whatever Madam, Madam Betty told Kamuzu Banda was law. Look at the one in Zaire. Ah, Mobutu oh when he was caught, when Mobutu was caught in the corner, cornered by uh, Lauren Kabila. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Mobutu, do, do you know his name? Original name was um, um, something Mobutu. Now, when he added the Seseko and he translated it, because journalists once asked him, the foreign journalist said, Why did you extend your name to Mobutu Seseko? He said, Seseko in Congolese was the one who destroys and leaves the evidence of destruction with fire. Look at that one in Central African Republic, John Bender Bokasa. Who clubbed school children for protesting against the quality of the uniform which the government gave the contract to his wife. So the point is that Africa has never produced a benevolent military leader. Uh, but, but let me add this, oh, please. Oh. You know I work with uh, three military governors. 
and they were gentlemen officers. We are still poor, sir. Uh -huh. Now, let us go beyond politics. Let us go beyond soldiers. Four things can make any woman being drunk. Like? Beauty. Mm -hmm. uh, if a woman everybody is telling, ah, baby, you are too great. Oh, my pretty old, she's going to become swollen headed. Mm. Intelligence. Ah, if they say, no, you're a genius. You can solve physical uh, physics, mathematics problem in a jiffy. Hmm. Such a man or woman is going to be swollen headed. Money. Money. That's why Yoruba say, uh, no, don't judge friendship and loyalty when a person is poor. Is when it gets rich. So beauty, intelligence, money, and position will swell anybody's head. Can we convert beauty to women? Uh, women. All right. Ah, no women who are listening, please. Oh, I am. Ah, they are my best friend. If there is no woman in the place, I will run away. I love women. On July 29, 1966, a group of northern soldiers, mainly dominated by officers of northern extraction, executed a counter coup against the perceived evil dominance in the military and political affairs. The counter coup was brutal and targeted senior Igbo military officers. The mastermind behind the coup, Colonel Mortala Muhammad, along with other northern officers, successfully orchestrated a plan to seize power and restore a more decentralized form of governance. Do not forget, after Major General Johnson Aguirre Ronsi, an Igbo officer emerged as the head of the military government after the January coup, in an attempt to stabilize the nation and bridge the ethnic divide, Ironsi introduced the unification decreed for, which sought to create a centralized unitary government, effectively abolishing the federal structure of Nigeria. This move while aimed at fostering unity, sparked significant controversy and heightened tensions, particularly among the northern population who saw it as an infringement on their political power. The assassination of Agui Ronse at Adekunle Fajui. Now, during the counter coup, Major General Aguye Ronsi was in Ibadan, don't forget that, the capital of Western Nigeria, on an official visit. Like Chief Lekon Alabi has narrated, he was accommodated at the government house in Ibadan, which was the official residence of Colonel Adekunle Fajui, the military governor of Western Nigeria, and a loyal friend and ally of Ironsi. As the coup unfolded, rebel troops surrounded the government house and demanded the surrender of Ironsi. Faced with the choice of handing over his guest or risking a bloodbath, Fajui chose to stand in solidarity with Ironsi refusing to surrender him to the mutineers. Both Ironsi and Fajui were subsequently arrested. In a tragic turn of events, the two men were killed by the rebel soldiers, highlighting the ruthlessness of the counter-coup and the intensity of the ethnic tensions that had engulfed the nation. Were they killed at Lalukmon or they were dumped at Lalukmon? And they were killed at Lalukmon because it was done. And the long convoy of army jeeps then, if you saw one army jeep in 1966 or pre-1966, you would jump to the other side of the road. Now you talk of a convoy of military uh, vehicles driven by coup plotters operating on that day. So there was a farmer 
on his farm. Who on seeing the long convoy blazing towards him, climbed a tree and saw everything that happened. So after the soldiers had did whatever they thought they had come to do at that spot, the nearest bush where they can finish them off and turn back, the farmer now came down from the tree, went to report to the chief what he saw, so the people quickly gathered and went and saw it. Then they came to Ibadan and told the government, the people handing government, since governor was taken away, the SMG, Security of Meeting Government and Head of Service, was in charge. So a search party was organized. Then Lagos. Somebody had called Lagos. That's where they also are implicating Yakubu Gawan, the chief of staff of the army, of complicity. Because Iransi uh, had called his wife that, hey, I'm, I'm hearing noises downstairs. I think something is going on here. The wife heard that already and prayed for her husband. So somebody now, the said Gawan now called and asking them, how far is, are you going? But please, I don't want any bloodshed. Because he has also been a Christian and gentleman. He said that. He was also accused of being contacted by, what's his name now? The man who killed Mutala Mohammed in Lagos. When he ran to the British High Commission and said they should put him online to Gawan. Dinka. Dinka, thank you. So all these things were, they had witnesses. And people don't just die like that. God knows the way he will let somebody, there will be someone who will have a clue to the answer. And for three days, Nigeria had no head of state. For three old days, because Muhammad and his gang called it Araba. They say in their language, Hausa means uh, when you distribute things equally. They wanted to break away. Thank you. They had sent their families north. And the intention was, when you get to Ibadan, and you are getting to Ilori, blow up the bridge. And let's divide Nigeria. It's gone. That is why in the draft of the speech of Muhammad, which the British High Commissioner and the American Ambassador quickly managed, certain pages were not taken off. And that's where Ujuku cornered Gawan for life. That you said in your maiden broadcast that the basis for unity is no longer there. Mm -hmm. That was the original text to, to have been read by Mutala Mohammed. Bye bye to Nigeria. Bye. Because they would have taken their pints of blood. So it was even the North that wanted to break away. The, the, the first time secession was used in this country came from the mouth of Prime Minister Tafawa Balewa. And the British. And, and the Americans British. convinced them to stay. Uh, so they, uh, now yeah. that you have the big pie, why do you want to divide it? Thank you. They now told them. Do you know the implication of breaking away? You don't have a seaport. You don't have access to anything. You have not planned... A you are landlocked. You are landlocked. Then they said... And there's oil in the Niger Delta. Uh -huh. And then the person who should have taken over after Ironsi was Brigadier Olufemi Ogundipe. But, but then, he chickened out. Uh, he, uh, he, he ran over. But they advised them. But he had no option. They were not ready to take orders from him. Uh, it was a sergeant. A sergeant was walking beside his window. And he thought the sergeant was too lackadaisical and all that. And he opened the window and said, Hey, the military command, back up, like, that the uh, sergeant should please wake up. And the sergeant replied him, Hey, brigadier, that, hey, I don't take orders from you. That was the first shock in his life. He needed to go. Yeah. Time to go. So you uh, don't let us talk and uh, say everything on radio. So Nigeria had no head of state for three days. So eventually when they negotiated, the American ambassador and the British Commission, they now settled for the chief of army staff who had a Muslim name, but yeah. was a Christian. Yakubu. They said when the northerners hear Yakubu, uh, they say, ha, power is back to us. That's why Yakubu. But in the true sense of the word, the Middle Belt carried out that coup. Oh, they have always been the... Uh, you know, sometimes we think it's full of Nia Usa. Uh, the the mid betters are, have always been the ramrod that they will use to knock. They even fought the war. Now, they've changed. Because they've seen the consequences. Uh, you are just using us as a... It, there's a technical name for when you are using somebody to, as a battering, battering ramrod. They have changed in the middle of it. 
now they are uh, in the front line for uh, resurrection in Nigeria. Before you go, yes. So you are celebrating at the Kunle Fajuyi today? Oh, with a lecture. But it's going to be a very modest. It's not the typical Nigerian lecture. There will be no opening prayer. There will be no closing prayer. There will be no cultural dances. There will be no uh, speeches and all that. No. Straight chairman will speak. Brigadier General Luwale Rotimi is the chairman. He was the chairman when we heard the 38th lecture 27 years ago. Then we are now considering, now that I'm in the studio, we may skip the visit to the site, La Lukmo site. Why? Why? Thank you. In the last one month or so, um, La Lukmo Olodo area had been flooded. The bridge that links the two towns have been washed, has been washed away. And I, as at last night, the information I got was that the road will be closed for repairs. So instead of going to um, La Lukmo, the tomb, the spot where Ironsi and uh, Faji were assassinated, we will just observe the silence in our heart because Faji was a Catholic. So we just go so we go straight now to the lecture at 2 p.m. Where is it holding? On Majorosun Club. Or if people can please aspire and get a copy of the Nigerian Tribune of today, there's a full page information at the behest, kindness of the African Newspaper of Nigeria Limited and the chairman, Ambassador Adetokumbo. Ola Tokumbo, I will all do some more. Full page advert, page three of today's tribune. They will see the details. Mm. Lalupon, is there a cenotaph there? No, no, no. It's just a thumbs. Okay. As the Secretary General of Adekule Fajui Foundation, I approached the late Governor Isiak Abiola Ajibambi. Your Excellency, please, you need to develop tourism in your state, which the present government says they are not going to tap into. Don't let the spot where Fajui and Ironsi were assassinated to go into oblivion. Do something about it. And he agreed. So his government did, um, they just marked the place out. Because Fajui's body was later moved to Ado for burial. And that of Ironsi was also moved to the east. So there is no skeleton, no body in Lalupon or Fajui or Ironsi. But that landmark is there now. I need to go see it someday. Oh, please come. The day we declared it open, um, the son of, a son of uh, General Ronsi came. The one who served as minister, junior minister of defense during your Basanjo regime. He came. Wow. We'll take two calls before Chief Alabi goes. 080915 080915-510-55. And zero eight zero five six nine nine eight six seven eight. Those are the numbers to call. Let's hear from you. Are you watching on Edmondo Bilo's pages? The ball is in your court. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Odilo. Good morning. Thank you. I thank God for Super Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ma, I don't can know you whoever please turn down the volume me. of your radio, sir? Mm -hmm. I don't know whoever stopped. Um, sorry, let me pick Mama, up. turn down the volume of your radio. I don't know radio. whoever stopped the uh, history in Nigeria. The teaching of history. They've done a very terrible thing. I think they should now let us start teaching our children history. It's very important. And even all those books you are encouraging people to read, will be incorporated into the system and the reading habits will now commence and our children will know more about what is happening in their nation and from there we can even have leaders that can be used to correct the ills in this nation. God be with you. Thank you very much. Uh, Radio Man, if I may quickly say that we should give credit where it is due and when it is due. We must give it to the uh, regime of President uh, Major General Muhammadu Buhari for restoring history. Oh, that government restored history into mm. school curricula after 30 years yanking by Babangida regime. The military. So history is back in our schools. Oh, yes. That's the point. Yes. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Yes, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you for the like the insight that was happening. I'm um, someone that loves this news very, very much. Uh, the other time before you went for advert, your guest was trying to talk about an interview you had with um, Major Adiboyega. You said when you come back, you we'll continue from there. But oh, okay. if okay. that's that's true. I, I, I had the interview when I was the producer presenter of current affairs program at NTA Badon called Speak Out. So Major Ademoiga was my guest. And as I said, that interview was almost mad. I was stopped by the radical lecturers and students of IFE. The moment I asked Major Ademoiga, why was no northerner in the January 15 coup? Yeah. And why was there no Igbo officer in the counter coup? It was a Araba. Uh, Mohammed called it Araba. Was Mutama. there any Yoruba military officer in the counter coup? No, ah, they went the Yoruba to suffer for it now. They didn't tell them, oh, particularly in Abe Kuta, Alamala Barak, and all that. It was kept to the chest of northerners. You know, they massacred Igbo officers in ah, that barrack. Oh, God. They, they said. They wanted to revenge. It, that's the name of the July 29, 96 school. And uh, one of them, in the interview published in a newspaper, admitted that they were holding the planning of the coup along the Ibadan Jabo Ode Road. They would leave Ibadan at about 9 p.m. and they would be discussing in a bus. So that it's, it won't leak. Another classic book you should read about military. Is this book Soldiers of Fortune, Nigerian Politics from Buhari to Obangida? <laughs> you need to read this book written by Mark Siolun. I tell you, if you want, you don't know how to get books, look for bookshops. And you can also contact me on at eobilo at eobilo at stateaffairsng.com. That's my email address. Mm. Eobilo at State Affairs NG. You can also chat me on WhatsApp. You have any information for me? You want to tell me what's going on around your area? You can also chat me on WhatsApp. 080-349-18449. Alright, that is not the station's number. So don't call that number. Just give me info. And if you are interested in books, another book I think you should read it's Nigeria's Soldiers of Fortune. That is part two of this first one. The Abacha or Basanjo years. You will know why we are where we are. And this book is a classic. Max Siolen. Remember, we've recommended three already. Why we struck. Don't forget to get that book. Why we struck. It's an interesting book. And you should read it. Why Will struck. Don't forget, written by Adewali Adimuyiga. The story of the first Nigerian coup. Why we struck tells the story of the first military intervention in Nigerian politics. The coup that took place on January 15, 1966, was conceived and planned together by Majors Nzogu, Ifajuna, and Adimuyiga. All right, then I've also recommended Nzogu, written by Olusegu Obasanjo. Obasanjo wrote different books on the Civil War. My Command. My Command, yes. You need to read that too. You know, Olusegu Nzogu. There's something about this officer. Then Ironsi, the book Ironsi, Nigeria, the Army, Power and Politics. Do you know Obasanjo and Nzogu? Slept on the same bed the night of January 15, 1966. And the person just telling us he didn't know that that coup was going because, to take place. Because Nzogu didn't mention it to him to show you how much he respected and had confidence in Obasanjo. Joe. They were friends. And he didn't tell his friend and they shared the same bed. He didn't tell him. He didn't tell Obasanjo. Joe. That's the power game. Ooh, Politics man. and power. Ah, Chief Lekon Alabin. Yes, and then, uh, excuse me, uh, the self-styled military president of Nigeria, retired General Ibrahim Babangida, was shaking 
to his bone by the April 20, 1990 coup of Gideon Oka. Because Babangida had been priding himself all over the world that he was involved in all the musicals in Nigeria. So he couldn't believe his ears and eyes and mouth that he was caught passed down by Major Gideon Oka. Abacha saved him, right? It was just a matter of luck. They didn't switch. Uh, it was done on a Sunday. It was done on a Sunday. And it was not the day they chose. They had to fast forward. And military coups are coming back in West Africa. Uh, the people who called for it too, didn't they jubilate in Nigeria? They always jubilate, but at the end of the day, what happens? Uh, because civilians, and I'm sorry to say this, civilians will be telling them later, ah, Your Excellency, and you know, a general. It is then that the thing will start to fall in crumbs. Because if really, in the textbook manner of coup, soldiers shouldn't last more than six months. But Latin people should be worried. Eh? Chief Le Kalabi. Yes. Thank you for featuring on State Affairs. God bless you. Edmund, thank you. Chief Le Kalabi is Maya Olubadon of Ibadoland. He is the founding secretary general of the Adekunle Fajuye Foundation. Thank you. I am Edmond Obilo. I'll be back after this break. Don't go away. Thank you. I'm on this road tonight. I'm attracted by the light that gives strength to the future. Now, an idea strikes me.